Hello, so it is well known that Godot does not have the most advanced debugging system, but today I want to share some things that I have learned over the years that have really helped me with debugging in the engine. Overall, this video should help to make your experience in Godot so much better, and learning to debug your projects as you go will save you so much headache in the long run. So subscribe to help other aspiring game developers, and now let's move into the tips that you should know about debugging here in Godot. Okay, first off, it is important to understand how Godot works. When we are within the editor and we run a scene, we are automatically in debug mode, but if we were to export the game to have others play it, then we would be in release mode. Now, what is the difference? Well, nothing really, but having these two different modes means we can have set code that works in debug mode, but does not work in release mode, and that's what I want to cover first. So this piece of code will basically just reload our current scene when we click the R key, but we can check if the OS is currently in debug mode by saying and OS dot is debug build. So if we are in debug mode, this function will return true, and if we aren't, then it will return false. So the code within this if statement will only run when the project is in the editor. So it is good for helping to develop, but won't be accessible or interfere with the game once it has been exported outside of the engine. With this same function, we can do so many useful things. For example, I just set up a little demo. So hypothetically, if we click the number one key and we are in debug build mode, then we will print off some useful player information just through some basic print statements. And if we click the number two key, we should print off some basic world scene information. So let's run the scene, click one, and we print off some player information in an organized form. We click two, and we're going to print off some scene information in a organized form. One prints updated player information, and so on. Now this is a very basic example, but in a complex game where you need to look at all types of different variables and all different scenes, doing it this way just helps to organize everything and the information you need is only printed when you ask for that information to be printed, which saves the output from looking like a spammy mess. Also remember that this would only work in debug mode, so if we export the game for others to play, these buttons would not interfere with anything. Creating these sort of hotkeys are so useful for testing. For example, maybe you want to reset the player's health with the click of a button when testing out a boss enemy so that you don't have to worry about the player dying. All we have to do is say health equals max health. Now we can reset the player's health with just the click of a button whenever we want throughout our game. And again, this only works during debug mode. So make use of these custom hotkeys as they can be so useful. Okay, so there are different print statements that can actually be much more useful than the normal print statement, especially for debugging purposes. Those being the print error and the push error functions. Print error is a simpler one. If we say print error, then add in our error message and we run the scene, then once that line has been called during runtime, it will print a red color coded statement into the output so that it stands out as an error in the output. Although this is much better than a normal print statement, in a complex project it may be hard to find where that statement has been printed from. But if we make that a push error function, it will actually not print a statement in the output but push an error. So once the function is called, it will actually push an error into the error tab, meaning we can find the logic sequence and click on it to be taken directly to that point in the script. So in a really complex project, the push error function can be incredibly helpful because it is so much better to catch and fix minor errors before they turn into something major. Okay, so breakpoints are useful if you understand how to use them. Just adding a breakpoint by clicking to the left of a line number is great, but there is so much more we can do once the game breaks. Godot automatically opens the debug panel when the game breaks, and within this panel we have breakpoint options. Step into which will run the code line by line and execute that code to the runtime window. Then step over, which just like step into will move line by line, but step over will not move between functions. As you can see, when we got to the end of that function, it automatically continued the game at full speed. But then if we bring the game back to a break, we can use the step into to walk through this code and get a better understanding of what is happening in the output, because otherwise it would look something like this when it's all printed instantly. But if we walk through it, maybe we can understand why this push error is being called. Once we catch something, maybe we want to hit the continue button to run the game at full speed again. And maybe on the next test run, we don't want the breakpoints to be caused, so we can click this button to skip all breakpoints in our next run. But just playing around with these breakpoint options may prove to be so helpful to you. In the debug tab, we also have the Godot profiler, which is useful for checking the performance of the game as it is running. Godot also has pre-built toggle debugging options, which are pretty helpful. Most of these options can basically just make different aspects of the game visible, for example, the collision shapes. But there's a documentation page that covers all these really in depth, so if you want to learn more about any of these Godot debugging features, be sure to check out the link I left in the description to the official Godot documentation page that covers all this so well. But being able to debug your projects is such an important skill in game development, so my final advice to you is to really focus on implementing some of the small methods that we went over today to help make your experience with the Godot debugger so much better. 
But I really hope this video was able to help you improve in your game dev journey. And if you have any questions, then please let me know in the comments and I will be sure to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to help other aspiring game developers. And until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye bye.